All right, next what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the uh, guitar solo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you watch this, check out the solo a little bit. You've got the tab for it, and then we're going to break it down a little bit. Now, this solo is really comprised of three different kinds of David Gilmore-ish minor solos, um, kind of pulling the best out of each one. And then we're going to talk about it, break it down, and teach it to you. So get ready and watch this. All right, so let's break down this solo a little bit. There's a ton of great, subtle things that happen in a David Gilmore style solo. The first thing we've got is we've got this slide moving into the ninth fret of the uh, fourth string. Sliding is essential to David Gilmore's uh, style. Just nice, smooth st uh, sliding elements. Now again, I'm not sliding from somewhere. I call this an airplane slide where I'm just kind of sliding in from nowhere. But I want to be accurate. I want to hit that nine. The next thing is, is targeting that bend. Boom. You bend it up. And he's, he's dead on every time, this guy. He just makes me want to turn my guitar into a coffee table. But that's what it is. So he is just dead on. When he does those, he just fires them up there and boom, they're, they're in tune every single time. Then we're going to add a vibrato, a nice smooth vibrato. And again, David Gilmore's got, Gilmore's got a, a, a vibrato to just die for. So we come off of that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go. So we're bending it up, bringing it back down, doing a pull off to seven. Then he's going back to the nine, adding, again, another wonderful vibrato. Don't have a lot of time, though. And then you go into your... And what we're going to do there is we're going to play seven on the third string, nine on the fourth string, back to the seven on the third string. And then he gives it just a little blues bend. So a blues bend is when you just twist that string just a little bit at the very end, like that. Now, I do have my solo tone on, so you've got some delay in there and some reverb you can hear. Trying to kind of emulate a bit of a David Gilmore sound. Um, he's got a pretty wet tone, so he does have vibrato. He's got, or vibrato. He's got, um, you know, delay and reverb and all that kind of stuff on his tone quite frequently. So think about that a little bit with whatever you've got with your amp at home. So we've got... Then we go... Okay, and then we can do a little slide off. Okay, then what we're going to do is we're going to move up. Now, this is a big one too, okay? So we're going up to the 11th fret of the third string, going to the 10th fret of the second string with my first and second fingers. And again, I'm sliding in. Then I'm going to the 12th fret of the second string. I'm going to bend that sucker up a step and a half. Which means that my 12 is actually 
going to sound like a 15. So, and again, he just fires those and hits them every time. Okay, and then you've got 10, 12, 10. Okay, which is like that same thing. So he's just doing the same thing an octave higher. Okay, so we've got... And then... And then we move into... And add a little blues bend, sounds nice. Okay, then we move down to go... Um... Again, really making the guitar talk using some st staccato in there. So what I'm doing is I'm playing the seven, the nine, and then I'm bending the nine up. Then bringing it back down, doing that pull off again. And then I'm going to the ninth fret of the fourth string, which is my B, that's my root. We do a little slide off, which happens a lot too at the end of a phrase. He'll slide back off. Okay, so let's do this together, okay? From the beginning, we got our lick number one. Add a vibrato. Lick number two. And then our little tag. Okay, and you can either do a little blues bend and stop. Like that, or you could do a little blues bend and maybe do a, a slide. Or you could just do the slide. Whatever whatever you like, whatever feels the best to you. The trick with a lot of the David Gilmore stuff is, is that it is staccato. Sometimes he'll use these big legato lines, and all of a sudden he'll have something that's very short. And it might just stop like that, which is cool too. Then you've got... Okay, that's the 11, 10. So we're going 11, 10, 11, 10. Now here comes our step and a half bend. And then add a little blues bend at the end of that. And then we've got our little tag here, the staccato lick. Okay, now we're gonna do this. We're gonna take this. Okay, this is another thing that David Gilmore does a lot and it just sounds so awesome. It reminds me of people like Eric Johnson and. Richie Kotzen and all kinds of different players like that. Um, but he does this nice melodic kind of movement. And what we're doing is we're playing pentatonic primarily, but here all of a sudden we're adding in a note called the ninth, or the second sometimes it's called. So what we're going to do is we're going to play 10th fret of the first string with our middle finger. We're going to do a pull off to nine, then 10, and then nine. Now again, the picking could be just about anything because it's not very fast. I tend to do it as a down and then an up and then a down. But I think anything you want to do is just fine. Then we're going to slide back to the ninth fret. Then we're going to go to the, or the seventh fret, excuse me. Then we're going to go to the ninth fret of the fourth string with our ring finger. And then we're going to do two slides. We're going to go from seven to six to four. So we're reiterating the B, or the root, on two different strings. So we're going, there's our B, and then, and then we're sliding back down to the B again. Which sounds pretty cool, okay? So, that's our next little lick. Now we have a little talking lick again. Is so cool. Little blues bend in there. So now what I'm doing is I'm sliding into the ninth fret of the fifth string, playing the seven twice, pretty staccato. Then back to the nine. Then I'm going to go to the seventh fret of the third string and give it a little blues bend. Again, at the very end, when you're ready to leave, that's when you want to give it a little bit of a bend. That's what causes the blues bend. If you do the blues bend too early. It just sounds like you're out of tune. You don't want to do that. You want to wait till you're just about ready to leave. And then boom, you 
throw that little bend in there, and then you go wherever you're going, which in this case is the ninth fret of the fourth string, or the B again. Okay, now when we get to that nine, we're not going to settle in. We're going to play nine, seven, nine. So I'm using down, up, down to make that fast enough. And again, a vibrato, whatever kind of vibrato you've got. Okay? Now, another thing that David Gilmore does a lot is coming up in the next lick. It's called a rake. And what I'm doing is I'm using basically a B minor uh, chord shape, but I'm pushing through with my pick, and as I do, I lift the, the fingers, kind of like what we did in the arpeggio. It's kind of like that when we were doing that. So I'm going to play 9, 7, 7, 7, but instead of just leaving them all down and getting that, I'm going to try and kind of release each one as I go by it. So I play the 9, when I hit the 7, the 9 is now gone, and then as I keep going, I'm just moving the pressure of my first finger. I'm rotating that pressure as best I can, so I'm not getting them all to ring up. Again, it's just an effect, so if you do have a couple that are overlapping each other or whatever, don't worry about it. It's, it's about the sound and the, um, the application more than its accuracy. So when he goes, you know, you hear people like um, Steve Ray Vaughan does many things like this a lot too. But it's that kind of rake that you're pushing through. And then what we're going to do is we're going to play the ninth fret of the first string and the tenth fret of the first string as well. So there's that, that ninth or second, we call it, in, in, a, in a diatonic scale. So he's using pentatonic, but he's adding in that it's called a ninth or a second. And again, if you don't know your theory, don't sweat it. Just play this. But if you're wondering, what is a ninth? That would be a good topic of discussion for us to have in either another course or maybe you jump on the Guitar Zoom community page and we talk about it a little bit, whatever you want to do. But that's what that note is. So the rake is really setting you up for the, the seventh fret of the first string. That's what you want to get to. So you've got that melody, but the rake is just there as an effect to get you there. If you need to use a little palm muting to, to create a more effective rake, that's okay too. Then we're going to do this lick, which again is just a traditional kind of pentatonic lick, but David Gilmore uses them quite frequently. So we're going... So we're playing 10 to 7 as a pull-off. Then we're playing 10 on the second string, back to 7 on the first string. So in this case, I'm doing down and then two downs. And then I'm going back to that 10th fret. And we're bend it up. Now for me personally, I do that 10 on the second string that I'm bending. I do that with an upstroke. Okay, so I'm playing pinky to first, then I'm using third finger on the second string so I can prepare for the bend. And again, these are just personal things that I do. If you decide it's easier to do it a different way, don't worry about it. It's fine. I just want to explain to you what I'm doing so you go, what is he doing there? And then you know what I'm doing. Okay, so it's still got that fire thing where you just hammer out that bend and then you add a vibrato which is a really com you know, confident thing that um, David Gilmore does in his playing all the time, and I wish I could do it just as well as he can, but I'm fairly convinced I cannot. But just fire that sucker up there and then give it a, give it a vibrato. Okay, then he's going to do this really cool triplet-style lick, which goes... Okay... Okay, so basically what we're going to do here is just this long lick. It's a repetitive pattern, if you want to call it that. I'm playing nine on the, th on the third string. I'm bending it up a whole step, and then I'm playing two sevens on the second and first strings. So a kind of a Chuck Berry style lick to begin with. Then we're going to play ten, seven, nine, starting on the second string. So that ten and seven is a pull-off for me. So I'm playing down, 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 and then up, 
and then a down at the end. So again, as you learn these patternized ideas, you may wind up changing the picking a little bit, but develop each piece individually. Instead of trying to take on the whole entire pattern, just learn and then attach it to so it makes sense and it feels comfortable within your hands. Okay, then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna play seven on the second string and then nine and seven on the third string. So basically what's happening is I'm making just patterns of three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. 